welcome to Orion Today. I'm Joe Johnson. I'm joined by Kim Urbanowski. Thanks for being here on our debut episode. What do you think? I'm excited. You know I love this place. So thank you for asking me to be here. Sure. This is kind of a new venture for us. We're going to uh, do some live content here at Owen TV, roll in some videos, invite some guests to come in and uh, say hi and uh, try to have some, some fun with it. Um, get things started. I would be remiss if I didn't mention that someone just celebrated a birthday. Kim, <laughs> how did you celebrate your 30th birthday? Um, oh, that's, thank you for that. <laughs> uh, yes, my 30th birthday. Uh, well, my daughter had, um, a, for, she's in the color guard, and so we did a public performance for all of our winter guard and uh, percussion programs, and then we went downtown for a little dinner. Um, my, my one daughter from, who lives in Chicago now for school was visiting. So. Oh, nice. Just a simple, easy, fun day. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, got some interesting stuff in the news to distract us from all of the world's problems. Mm. But uh, are you an Oscars fan? Do you watch the Oscars at all? I, I have to say I am an Oscars fan for that red carpet stuff. Yeah. I do really, really enjoy watching uh, all those crazy fashions on the runway. But um, I, didn't, I didn't watch it this year, uh, but I, I, did hear, I did hear about <laughs> some of the things that happened. I, I'm a movie buff, as most people know me know well, um, and I watch the Oscars every year because it's newsworthy, it's historical. Mm -hmm. I like to be able to talk about it around the water cooler the next day, and a lot yeah. of my friends are into it. As a matter of fact, I used to have Oscar parties before uh, COVID uh, rolled around, and we'd all sit around with our ballots, and you yeah. can imagine a couple years ago I had eight or ten people and we all had our ballots for watching the Oscars and then they get to that best picture announcement and they revealed the wrong movie. Oh, you remember I remember that? that. I do remember that. And we were all sitting there with our jaws hanging open like what I just know. happened? How and does that happen? you think that's as crazy as it could possibly get and <laughs> Will Smith said hold my beer. Yeah he did. <laughs> he did say hold my beer. I don't know. I, you know, I, I saw it on social media. That's where I saw it, um, and I th and it was kind of later when I saw it. So I thought, is this, is this real? Is this a? Uh... So I'm trying to find. You know, I'm going back and looking, and it did really happen. And I was pretty stunned by it because, you know, I grew up in an era where I listened to Fresh Prince and mm. and all that music and stuff. So I grew up with him, and so I was a little shocked to see that. Yeah, and I I place. Blame on both parties. Mm. I love Chris Rock. I think he's one of the greatest comedians of all time. But I'm I'm getting a little weary of mean spirited humor, right. picking on people because of their you know yeah. physical appearance or whatever. Uh, from what I heard, it wasn't rehearsed, it wasn't planned, it was just off the cuff, and I yeah. cringed when he said it. Mm. Um, but I did not expect the reaction. And you know, someone defended him saying, "Oh, it was heat of the moment," but. He took some time to, first of all, yeah. even react to it because initially he was laughing. I know. But he was. then he took the time to get up, uh, get on stage, walk that path over to Chris. And yeah. Chris is thinking, what's he going to do? Is this yeah. a joke? Is he going to grab the mic? He's and, unsure. Yeah. And it was so shocking. And my phone is blowing up. <laughs> friends are texting me going, what just happened? And. Uh, it was anarchy, and um, uh, you know, nothing felt right after that. It really didn't, and I, I think, you know, again, like you said, there were multiple times when he could have been like, yep, not a good idea. Maybe not. Okay, <laughs> but it's one more step. Maybe it's not a good idea. And then just the sheer what just, you know, just not understanding what was happening on Chris Rock's face. I have to say, yeah, I agree with you. You know, sometimes you shouldn't, like, jokes are jokes, and I understand that, but... Um, sometimes they do go a little far, yeah. and I think maybe they, you know, if, if they had known each other and were friends before that, they should have just handled it a little bit differently, man yeah. to man, off to the side. Unfortunately, you know? I, I guess there was a little bit of history. People have been bringing up the fact that a few years ago when Chris Rock hosted the Oscars, he made a jab at Jada when she supposedly boycotted the ceremony. Yeah. And he said, Jada boycotting the Oscars is like me boycotting Rihanna's after party. Yeah. And kind of poke fun at her. So I have a feeling there yeah. is some animosity there. Probably so. And why Will was allowed to remain there the rest of the show, I personally think he should have been escorted out. But, I, I, um, yeah. I mean, if it felt a little bit like it sort of... Um, 
just dampened his win yeah. a little bit and the speech afterwards just didn't seem um, organic anymore yeah. because of what had just happened. Yeah. So, um, And everyone who uh, went up on stage after that, Questlove won an Oscar for a documentary and he had to follow that. And I yeah. felt bad for him that yeah. his moment was sort of taken away yeah. from him. But yeah, that's unfortunate. Yeah. That's and unfortunate. I had to look up whether or not Will Smith had ever won an Oscar before. He'd been nominated multiple times, but this was his first win. So imagine his first win being overshadowed I by know. this. So I know. It's unfortunate. Well, you know, I'm, I'm hoping he, you know, thinks about it a little bit and, <laughs> you know, sort of maybe, you know, makes amends, you know, with, with us. Because, I mean, it was a shock for us to see it. Like, yeah. it's not what we signed in to watch. So, right. You know. Yep. But I'll be watching next next year. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so will I now, I guess. <laughs> now, uh, bringing it back home a little bit, um, uh, we recently, uh, myself and Jimmy Johnson, you know Jimmy I Johnson. Do. He he has an online presence uh, under the name uh, Where Living is a Vacation, where he shares photos and tidbits about the history of Lake Orion. Mm -hmm. Him and I got together a year or two ago and decided we were going to start producing a history program. And the first episode we did uh, rolled around Halloween. Mm -hmm. And so we did a little tour of two of Lake Orion cemeteries and it was really, really fascinating and really popular. Um, and we decided we need to keep this going. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, did a, we did a segment on our food drive, our ONTV food drive, and that was really popular. Uh, and so our most recent episode, we wanted to talk about the history of the Scripps Estate and how it relates to Canterbury Village and all this surrounding land, which at one time was known as the Wildwood Farms, owned by yeah. Scripps, uh, the heir to the Detroit News fortune. Yeah. Um, and part of the show, we talked about the Scripps Mansion, which, uh, while you were director at the Chamber of Commerce, had a little gathering at the Scripps Mansion, and it was my first time to get inside that beautiful building. It was unreal. Yeah. That that was an excellent. Um, and they had, if I remember correctly, they had filmed a movie there, yeah. and so there were a lot of um, things in the rooms that were showing. You know, this is what this is where we were when we filmed this scene, and there were some, um, you know, shots and stuff like that that we could look at. But it was really interesting having access to that place in in the way that we did. It was a um, an ambassador led networking. Uh, thing and our ambassadors wore like these masks and it was really cool and there were some cues to you know but we got a um, we got a really lovely tour and and that place is incredible it's yeah. just incredible so much history there so in this clip you're about to see uh, we got a little video tour of the uh, Scripps Mansion so if you've never been there here's your opportunity to get a look at what's inside that beautiful historic building, uh, which is now known as Guest House Incorporated. 1,000 square feet and has 67 rooms. Now, it's not normally open to the public. Um, occasionally, people are invited to come in for uh, functions and stuff. It was featured in a, a low budget um, uh, religious uh, faith based film. Um, and uh, so people have had access to it. And I was lucky enough in 2016, I think it was, the Chamber of Commerce, Chamber of Commerce had uh, an event there and I was invited to come and shoot video. While I was there, I interviewed uh, Lisa Drummond, who is uh, with Guest House Incorporated, the current owners of the Scripps Mansion and surrounding properties. Um, and she's uh, going to explain in this video clip that we shot a few years ago uh, a little bit about the history of uh, the Scripps Mansion and uh, how it's used today. First of all, throw some numbers at me. When was this house built and how long was it privately owned by the Scripps family? Okay. It was built from 1926 to 1927, actually about a year and a half. It's 28,000 square feet. And the, um, they moved out in 1952 after Mr. Scripps' death. So they moved in in 27. It was originally a summer home. And then in 1930, they moved here full time. Wow. And so then after his death, it became, it fell into private hands or how, what happened after his death? After his death, the, it was originally a 3,800 acre estate. It was subdivided and um, the archdiocese actually purchased part of the land. And then in 1956, Austin Ripley wanted to start a treatment area for Catholic clergy. And he bought the land from the archdiocese. And that's how Guest House got started. 
So they've been using that for that purpose, using this house for that purpose for quite a long time. This is our 60th anniversary, yes. Oh, wow. That's yeah, amazing. in fact, we opened our doors May 20th, 1956. And uh, I don't know if a lot of people are aware of the fact that Canterbury Village used to be part of this estate and that was some of the property that was partitioned yes, off? Yes, some of the barns over there are from the original and the, the f I think it's four little shops at the back, and little houses, that's part of the original property. Most of Lake Orion was part of the original property. How often or, or how long has this particular house been open to the public for events like today? Actually, we're just opening it back up. Um, we were open in 2008, 2009, 2010 for events, and then we shut down for a while, and because we do use this room, or this, I'm sorry, this house for treatment. And then um, we're now opening it up a little bit at a time for that's, events. That's awesome. What are the reactions when you see people come in here? I mean, it's, it's just <laughs> beautiful, overwhelming, isn't it? They're, they're just amazed. I mean, it's a beautiful home. It's a special, special place. And a lot of people, even in the Lake Orion area, are, have never been here. So now that they're able to come in and see it is very, very nice. Now, I overheard you say earlier that even though the house looks like it's been here forever, that there are some modern conveniences you want to touch yes, on? Yes, there bit? are. Actually, the infrastructure for the house is concrete and steel. So we have 12 inch thick walls and then all of the facings have been put over that to give it the look of an older home. Um, the kitchen, all the appliances are commercial grade so we actually can um, do some catering out of the kitchen. We have an elevator which would have been high tech for 1926 and actually electricity would have been pretty high tech for 1926 and indoor plumbing. And we're so happy for the indoor plumbing. <laughs> <laughs> so they were ahead of the curve, right, when they built this building? They were, and that was sort of the um, theory for people building houses like this and like Meadowbrook, that you replicated an older home, but you brought in new technologies to bring it up to date and make it comfortable. And welcome back to Orion today. It was so awesome to, to go inside that building. And I was just recently back inside the Scripps mansion there because uh, ONTV is going to be doing some video work with Guest House. And they're going to have us record some lectures and uh, help us tell a little bit more of the history of the building and the estate. So I'm kind of excited that I'm going to get to visit that building a few more times. That's cool. That's a cool yeah. opportunity. Yeah. So if you excited. need someone to help, you let me know. All right. Okay. You're in. <laughs> Uh, so I'm Joe Johnson, I'm with uh, Kim Urbanowski, and we are now joined by Roger Broder of the Lions Club, who's here to share what uh, they have coming up over the next uh, few months. Uh, Roger, it's uh, obviously been a little difficult the past few years, a lot of events canceled, and uh, now slowly things are returning back to normal. Uh, are you excited about uh, 2022 and the Lions Club? Oh my gosh, I so am, Joe. Thanks for having me here, by the sure. way, to talk about some of what we're doing. And it's last night I put together a list of what's coming up for 2022, and it took me a long time. There's so much happening. I was it was it was exciting for me to know <laughs> that we're actually doing fundraisers and charity events and back to our work that we're supposed to be doing. And you're so dependent on these fundraisers that when uh, COVID shut everything down, I would imagine not just your organization, but charities uh, all over the Orient area were impacted by this. So you're, you're really dependent on these fundraisers. Yeah, absolutely. It's a big part of what we do. We do fundraisers and then we do, what do we do with the money? Now that we've collected it, how do we help people? That's, that's what Lions do, yeah. is help people. So without the fundraisers, it really, stifled what we were able to do but luckily be, before that we had a really good jubilee in june the year before and and we had jubilee at least the carnival in 2021 so we were still able to have some funds coming in just not what we're used to so this year is looking really good and we're really hoping for a lot of support from the community like we've had in the past great so what's uh, next up on the calendar so we always are looking for more help we're looking for more volunteers more members and we have an open house coming up April 13th, 7 o'clock at, um, at uh, Johnny Black's over on Baldwin. Okay. And that's where we have our meetings, the first and third Monday, first and third Wednesday of every month now. And that, that open house should be great. We're looking to get a bunch more members. And the good thing about the Lions Club is you don't have this solid commitment where you have to guarantee so many hours or so many meetings or anything. It's, we always tell people it's, it's, family, work, then lions. Mm. The, the lions are important. It's an important part of 
you know, are, as members, it's an important part of our lives, but not as important as our families. Uh -huh. And so it's, we want help, but we don't want you to ha feel that you can't be a lion if you can't give 20 hours a week or, or anything like that. So well, that's, yeah. that's I would important. imagine too that even if, even if you had, you know, one person that could give, you know, 20 hours a week, or if you had four people that could, you know, it all adds up. Just it does. The more people, the better, and, um, and then it's, you know, more We have some members too. that do one event a year, and we right. are thrilled <laughs> to have them. Yeah. We're thrilled to have them. So keep that in mind. Open house at Johnny Black's on the 13th. And I know so. uh, a lot of organizations like yours, a problem that they're facing is a lot of their men members are sort of aging out. And so there's a need for younger people to come in. Are you facing yeah, that same dilemma? Absolutely. And it, it seems like that there's not as much volunteerism and, and service-oriented people that there used to be. You know, they, I mean, I grew up always in my family, always helping wherever we could, helping people. It doesn't seem like that's as important to people anymore. But we're looking for people that want to do that, that want to get out there and help others. And so Great. with a lot of things coming up. So. Awesome. And one event that I look forward to, I, I shoot it for our newscast every year, and we take part in it, is the uh, Lake Orion Lions races. Traditionally, they had been held at the Knights of Columbus. That building has been sold and is under new occupation. Uh, so tell us uh, about uh, the upcoming Lions races this year, the changes that are in store, and what can people expect? So, so the Lion races are one of my favorites, not just because I'm the MC and DJ for it. <laughs> but it's, it's a lot of fun. So these lions, we, we sell these to local businesses and they decorate them however they want. We just sell them the, the piece of plywood as a lion. And we line these lions up six, six rows and it's like a horse race. We have big, like two foot square fuzzy dice that we roll. And every time that the dice is rolled, those two numbers, those lions move forward one space. Meanwhile, everybody's making bets. We have horse betting software to set the odds, and, and I'm calling out the races and the winners, and every business gets their name mentioned every time they move forward. And it's just so much fun. People are yelling and screaming and excited to make these bets. It's just a great night. So this year, it's on May, May 7th, and because, like you said, the Knights of Columbus isn't available anymore, we're having it at Boulder Point Golf Club up in Oxford. It's really the only place big enough in the area to, to hold the event. And, and they, do, they do a great job with events, so we're looking forward to that. And as you can see, our lion is wearing a medal, meaning uh, he won one of his races. He's a big winner. It was one of the most proud moments of my life, seeing him cross that finish line. So that was a lot of fun, and uh, he'll, he's, he's not put out the stud yet. He's going to race on May 7th. So, yeah. What else you got so, coming up? So coming up, uh, watch for us on the streets, doing our usual white cane sales to raise funds again. Um, we'll be all over the streets of Orion Township and the village. Uh, May 13th through the 22nd, mostly the weekends, we get out there in big groups and kind of take over an entire intersection, especially right up the road here at Clarkston and Joslin is one of our key places. So watch for us on the roads for that. Roads for that. What um, I recommend, you know, when I see uh, organizations on the road uh, in traffic and stuff, one thing I, I always wonder is not a lot of people carry cash anymore, and that's got to be a challenge when you're trying to raise money like that. So uh, as that date gets closer, you might want to hit the ATM, mm -hmm. yeah. have maybe a couple of 20s <laughs> in your wallet, right. and uh, make sure you have some cash on you to, to help out these organizations. And uh, Now, the, the Girl Scouts <laughs> have a, tackled this by accepting credit cards when uh, they're out in front of stores selling they cookies. Do. So they're one step ahead of us. A little, little harder when cars are driving by, but I like the way you think about it. I'll go into the ATM first. There you be go. Ready yeah. for the, so be ready for the 13th and 14th. Your, there you go. Um, um, so and then what's next? Of course, coming up in June is what everybody looks forward to every mm -hmm. summer. And we have the, the Jubilee with our carnival. This year, the beer tent is back, in fact, Somehow I'm in charge of it this year. <laughs> Don't know how I got into that, but I'm running the beer tent this year. We'll have bands. We'll have uh, uh, Kevin, the DJ, on Thursday Thursday evening, and that's the uh, 23rd. And then on the 24th and 25th is the, the uh, beer tent with bands. Of course, the night of the 25th is our fireworks at 10 o'clock at night. And uh, again, the beer tent is a great place. We have an area set outside where you can see right over the buildings. 
looking out toward Greens Park and a good place to watch the fireworks. Yeah, so long time tradition here in Lake Orion. Oh, at least 80 years or so. Yeah, there really? was a period of time when uh, the streets of downtown Lake Orion were under construction and the Jubilee had to move yeah. over to, uh, mm -hmm. to Canterbury Village. And uh, right. you, I think the event suffered a little bit from that new location. And I was so happy to see it return to downtown it's Lake Orion where it belongs. Mm -hmm. And now with the beer tent returning, uh, we should have the it's, best event It's going to be a great year gonna be a great year we're gonna have perfect weather every day that was already <laughs> guaranteed to us so we should be set there ah such there. a fun and I've heard people describe it as a reunion where people come back from wherever they yep. may have traveled to and come back to Lake Orion and celebrate with friends and family in downtown Lake you Orion. see a lot of people that you don't see on a regular basis yeah you know, people come out of the woodwork so it's fun and at, also at, at the uh, Jubilee we're also going to have our project kids site tent set up and that's really cool because we get we take kids and, and their parent in with into the tent with them. And we just have a camera mm -hmm. that from a distance, a few feet away, we can take a picture of a kid's eyes and give them a report about uh, it measures a, a whole bunch of different aspects of their eyes and can tell them if they have any trouble, we can refer them then to a doctor. And uh, we do hundreds of kids a year. In fact, every um, First Saturday of every month, we have kids sites set up at the Orion Township Library. Oh wow! So oh, wow. yeah, from I think it's from 10 to 10 to 12, first Saturday of every month. So, oh, wow. and they're they're doing you know 15, 20 kids every Saturday at the library. So that's great. It's been wonderful. Yeah, I remember. I think it was like third grade. We had someone come into our elementary school and says, "Anyone having trouble seeing the chalkboard?" And I raised yeah. my hand and got tested and yeah. wearing glasses ever since. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, we used to have, um, when we had the, the Shop Local Expo mm -hmm. for the Chamber, you all, all mm -hmm. always had that booth right there underneath the stairs where it was nice and quiet right. and you could do that. Um, uh, so, I guess, can I go back for just a little, yeah. little bit? For mm -hmm. those who are watching that may not know, like, the, the purpose behind all of this, I mean, I, you, we've got the white cane and we've got the kids' site, so um, is that the main focus of, of what the Lions Club does? So, a lot of that is... is fundraisers that's a lot of what we have to do in order to support our our charity work mm -hmm. um, most people in town are familiar with the Christmas basket program mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. every year a week before Christmas we distribute food to a little over 200 families or households and the whole community takes part in delivering that food and organizing it and shopping mm -hmm. and we have gifts as well so that's part of where our funds go uh, we have a Christmas party for developmental, developmentally impaired kids mm -hmm. at the Pine Tree School. Um, that's a lot of fun. They, we have Santa and, mm. and elves there, and Mrs. Santa, and uh, San, Mrs. Claus, <laughs> Mrs. Santa. Santa. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a lot of fun for everybody, including us. Um, of course, Leader Dogs for the Blind was right. started by Lions mm. many years ago, back in the 1920s. Um, uh, we, we provide eyeglasses and hearing aid uh, for those who need those and, um, oh. and can't get them themselves. Uh, just a lot of different things that we, we take part in that, you know, even uh, within our own township, um, we have scholarships for high school students. Yeah. We support some of the, the baseball teams. Um, the uh, robotics first robotics at we just had the first robotics team from Walden Elementary come to our or Walden Middle School sorry <laughs> right, right come to our Lions Club and tell us about what they do yeah. it, it's pretty amazing what these robotics teams do they oh, brought sure. the robot with them and gave us a whole presentation about it it was yeah. wonderful so you guys are doing so much good in the community yeah. and you know, every year I'm at the Christmas basket program shooting video, and it's it's just a well-oiled machine. Like, it's like a bunch of ants. Like, just <laughs> all, they all know their job. They all know their role, and everything's moving and going out the door. And it's just amazing to see year after year. It's a lot of fun. We're getting yeah. we're getting good at it. Yeah, finally. All right. <laughs> and, and keep in mind, this year, another great event coming back we haven't had in the last two years is the auction before Christmas. So, oh, that's right. Yeah, we'll we'll have that back at the Malash dealership at the Palace and uh, lo really looking forward to that being bigger and better than ever. 
So and they donate that space and take care of the overhead and, and all that. The family's that wonderful so, to the Lions. Yeah. Always have been. Yes. Yeah, so your expenses are minimal for that auction, and a yes. lot of a lot of the uh, silent auction stuff comes in from local the businesses yeah. and things like that. Yeah, so. the businesses in this town. Uh, just tremendous. Yeah, we I get agree. so much help. They are so generous with the whole community. It's 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 great to be here. Kind of have it's to really bat them fun. away. They're so excited to participate. Yeah. Whenever we need help, we you know we'll put a message out on Facebook or something, and the response is overwhelming. No matter what we're trying to do, no matter what we need help with. Fantastic. So we're really happy to be here. Do you want to give out any contact information if anyone needs to reach out to the Lions? Just head on out to head out over to the Facebook page. Mm -hmm. Um, or you can go to the, our website, lakeorionlines.org, and it's a little out of date. I haven't updated it in a while, but the, the contact information is all there. But the Facebook page is the best place. Just go like our page, and you'll get updates on everything. All these events for the whole year are up there. You can see that, and I put posts up. I'll put, this, put your videos up on a regular basis from yeah. on TV. So important things that are happening around the township that we want to promote as being good for the township and we'll, we'll, we'll get it all up on Facebook so all right. keep we'll an eye out there. Spread the word. Gotcha. Thanks okay. for coming out today and speaking of charitable organizations in the community uh, the VFW does a lot of good in the community supporting uh, the Veterans Memorial and uh, they present uh, a, every year they present a check to the uh, fish food pantry to, to adopt a shelf and just recently Chuck Haskin who's with VFW Post 334 received national recognition for his work here in the community and we had him in the studio recently to talk about how he got involved in his uh, military service and what the VFW does in the community. So here's a little excerpt from that interview with Chuck Haskin. Talk about what led to you serving your country. How did, uh, talk about that phase of your life. Well, back in, after I got out of high school, they had the U.S. draft that was taking anybody who's over 18 years of old and stick them out there and you get the lucky number. <laughs> and I graduated. Like the lottery, right? the, lo the lottery <laughs> system. And that was the only lottery I ever won. <laughs> so it, uh, my number was 35. So in 1970, uh, my number was picked. It was my turn to go in the U.S. Army. Mm. And uh, so didn't want to do that because I had a really good job at the time. And, but that was something I felt that I needed to do. Mm. And uh, so I went to basic training down in Kentucky, went to advanced training in Georgia. Uh, I had a short stint in Sports Hill, Oklahoma, before I shipped off to Vietnam. Mm. And I could finalize my Army career while I was over in Vietnam. Wow. So how, how much time did you spend in Vietnam? The total time was about nine months. I got injured, so I was sent home, and they released me from the service once I got home. Wow. So, uh, but I arrived in February and left in November. Wow. So, did you receive a Purple Heart? No, I did not receive a Purple Heart. No? No, I was involved in a uh, Jeep accident. Mm -hmm. We were responding to an attack on the Australian Embassy in Saigon, and uh, we got rammed. Oh, wow. So uh, we think yeah. it was the sapper who attacked the, because it was after curfew, and so nobody should have been out at that time of night. Mm -hmm. But we were running without lights. They were running without lights, and we were just both going pretty fast. Mm. And uh, so it busted me up pretty good when we got in that accident. Wow. So you come home, and during that period in America's history, uh, Vietnam uh, soldiers, veterans that were returning home didn't receive a warm welcome when they re returned home. But over time, I think there's been a shift and now it seems like America uh, recognizes what veterans have done and the sacrifices that, we've, that you've made. Um, have you witnessed that? Have you witnessed a shift in America's appreciation for its, its uh, uh, fighters and, and yeah. veterans? No, Joe, I agree with you because before 9-11, you didn't want to tell anybody you were a veteran. When we came home in the 70s and in the 60s, we weren't welcome home. When I tried to get in the 72, when I tried to join a local VFW over in Southfield, they wouldn't let me in the door because I was a Vietnam veteran. Hmm. 
Wow. It, was, it was all World War II veterans. They could consider one that was a war, and two, they didn't like what we were doing over there. You know, mm -hmm. they all this stuff. So I went for many, many years without doing anything with any veterans organization wow. or let anybody know I was a veteran. But after 9-11, that, that shift from 180 degrees, that people started appreciating for what we put our careers up for yeah. and did for this country and what the younger generations are being called out to do for 9-11 with Death of Storm, Kuwait, Option Freedom. Um, and my old unit right now, they're attached to the 101st Airborne down in Kentucky. Uh, I was with the military police. And they have 43 different places they are at right now around the world that we don't hear about. Mm. But they're trying to do what they can to keep the globe peaceful. Right. And uh, doing that. So, But I agree with you. It's 100% that today versus back in the 70s and 80s, uh, being a veteran, uh, you see a lot of veterans today, they're wearing hats. They mm. tell them what they are. One thing that hat does is identify one veteran to another veteran that they can talk and you know if they relate to. Um, but, but during those times, you would you never see that. You yeah. would never, never see that. And welcome back to Orion Today. And is that the name of the show? Yes, Orion Today. <laughs> I had to look back at the monitor here. I'm Joe Johnson, joined by Kim Urbanowski. And uh, congratulations to Chuck Haskin for his national recognition. They do a lot of great stuff in the community. And uh, they support the Veterans Memorial, which I've watched its evolution from the beginning. Like, I yeah. was there when they obtained that parcel of property on, on Lapeer Road. And every new addition that they've they've included as they've built it up and it's become i think one of the nicest memorials in the nation i agree yeah a high, big point of pride for us for sure and the people that maintain it and care for it i mean uh, you know it's it's an incredible piece of of history for us you know there are a lot right. of names out there on those bricks and a lot of people who put a lot of you know uh pride and effort into keeping it the way that it is. So Mr. Watros yeah. does an excellent job doing that. He does, and there's lots of events coming up when uh, spring rolls around. Uh, they're already starting to get word out that the Memorial Day uh, events are a go. Oh, yeah. There's going to be the 5K race. Uh, I don't know. I haven't heard yet if the parade is returning. Do you know if the Memorial Day parade is returning yet? I haven't heard anything, honestly, about that. I have to look into that. that. But yeah. I know they have a ceremony over at the Memorial. They, they've had it uh, last year, and uh, that's always a fantastic event yeah. over there. And they have uh, coffee with a veteran yes. uh, where you can go in. If you're driving by, like, on a Saturday and you see some people gathered at the, at the Memorial, Pop in, say hi, have a conversation with the veteran. That's always really Absolutely. great to hear them share their stories. So. Uh, yeah, very, very cool stuff. Yeah. Um, so our next segment that's going to be coming up in a few minutes is uh, Joey Tysick and his Lake Orion Sports Update. Uh, apparently, Lake Orion High School has had some big successes yeah, over the past uh, few months, winter sports. Uh, very proud of our Lake Orion athletes. Do um, you have a connection to the Lake Orion sports and all that? Um, I don't, I, not the, the sports in the terms of, of baseball or what you think are traditional sports. I do, I do have uh, a senior who is um, in the sport of the arts and that's winter guard, uh, which is still a sport and you know, um, marching band kids do that. But um, yeah, they compete and they, they're competing this weekend in state finals. So that's, that's my connection to sports. But um, I did interview one of the young ladies uh, on the basketball team for the senior exit interviews, which I think everyone should participate in senior exit interviews, you will be so impressed by these kids to begin with but no I've read um, about these senior exit interviews talk about that what's what's the purpose of a, a senior exit interview so they they sort of um, it gets them ready for an interview you know like maybe a job interview mm -hmm. we the members from the community come in you have a list of 10 questions that you ask the kids they're prepared for it they know what they're going to be asked but it's it's all about you know, poise and dressing correctly and presenting yourself and, you know, just getting the jitters out about doing interviews. Um, but it's really interesting because, 
you, you know, you, they, they tell you what, they, what they've done and where they're going and what their hopes are and what they're good at and what they're not so good at. It's just a really rewarding thing to do. That's fantastic. Yeah. And here at ONTV, you know, we have internships and stuff here. And uh, what, what we try to prepare them with is that demo reel. Right. If, if a student wants, is thinking about a career in video production or journalism, what we try to have them accomplish here is putting together that demo reel because a good demo reel is, will give you such a huge advantage over everybody else competing to yeah. work in this field, which is really, really a popular field to work in. Sure. Uh, so yeah, so we, we do what we can to try and give these students an advantage when they're out looking for a job in the real world. It's, it's interesting because you know, when, when they're at that age, they're 17, they're 18, they're not really entirely sure, you know, and it's hard for them to think about making a choice, uh, like now, what am I gonna do for the rest of my life? So one of the things that I think is really cool about this place is that you do give people the opportunity to try it out before, you know, let's, let's go in and try and do a podcast, let's come in here and take the video class, let's, you know, just see what it's like mm -hmm. um, before they, they dive right in. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, as I mentioned, uh, Lake Orion sports teams have been really successful, and our girls' basketball team uh, did something that hasn't been accomplished, I think, in more than a decade. So here's Joey Tysick with the sports wrap-up. Hello and welcome to Lake Orion Sports Update. As the winter season is finally coming to a close, we take a look back at the successful seasons of varsity hockey as well as boys and girls varsity basketball. The hockey team once again had a great season under Coach Krefsky as they finished 18-8 in the OAA Red and winning the division title. This led to the Dragons getting to compete in the regional playoff where they would face off against Rochester United. The Dragons were able to handle business and get the win 4-2 and reach the regional final against the best team in the state, Detroit Catholic Central. Lake Orion would battle hard, but they would come up just short and would fall 1-4. Catholic Central would go on to win the state final, so it was a valiant effort by Lake Orion. Either way, the season was another great one for the hockey squad. The boys' varsity basketball team also had a solid season as they finished 15-7 in the OAA Red and came up just short of a division title. However, they were in a good position to win their district in the playoffs. Because of their record, they were able to get a first-round bye, and in the semifinals, they faced Utica Eisenhower. The game was back and forth, and the Dragons toughed out the victory 49-47. Then Lake Orion would face off against Rochester Adams in the district final. Lake Orion fought hard, but they were unable to move on to regionals as they lost to Adams 46-52. A great season nonetheless as the boys fought a lot of adversity throughout the season. The varsity girls basketball team had one of the best seasons in recent memory as they finished 18-7 with an incredible 9-1 division record. They then entered the district tournament coming off two losses but overcame that beating Adams in round 1 50-26 and then Stony Creek 32-30 who they hadn't beat since 2009. This would lead to the Dragons having an opportunity for a district title, which hadn't happened since 2010. Here's the story. On March 4th, the Lake Orion girls varsity basketball team faced off against the Rochester Falcons in the district final at Lake Orion High School. Earlier in the season, the Dragons fell to the Falcons, but this Dragons team was different, as they are coming off a semifinal win against Stony Creek, who they hadn't beaten since 2009. The Dragons were looking for the title. In the first half, it would be a back and forth affair as the pace was a little slowed down, but both teams played tough. With the grit of the two teams, we saw plenty of fouls and free throws. The Falcons would control most of the half, but every time the Falcons got a run, the Dragons would answer back. The Falcons pushed their lead to eight midway through the second, but the Dragons clawed back and were only down 18 to 21 at the half. Coming out of halftime, the Falcons immediately went to their post-up game with the two six-foot freshmen, Alice Max and Kylie Robinson. Coach Bridges then made a savvy change defensively as the girls went to a 3-2 zone to throw off Rochester. 
After that, the game would get a bit floppy as the defensive battle continued. Rochester even went to a trapping 1-3-1 to throw off the Dragons. But the slow-paced defensive game suits the Dragons all too well. It allowed them to run their plays, move the ball, and get open looks. Going to the fourth, the Dragons held a two-point lead. The Dragons were able to extend that lead to six, and just before the Dragons could make a big run, the Falcons put back their aggressive half-court trapping defense to reel the Dragons back in. However, this led to the Falcons picking up a few extra fouls, and in the closing minutes, the Dragons just needed to hit their free throws, which they did and won the district title for the first time since 2010. Dragon Broadcasting caught up with Coach Bob Bridges and a couple of the players after the huge win. You know, our kids believed from minute one that we started this track down district row, we knew we had to run the Rochester gauntlet and we just believed. We worked and worked and worked. We're, we're just as talented, if not more talented, than every team we played. And, and this week, we just outworked them. I know on Monday before the game, you talked about that. How big of a role did your, did your bench play in all three victories this week? Our bench was huge. We, we, played, we played 11 kids. 11 kids tonight, 11 kids Wednesday, and on Monday we played 16. Every kid got in on Monday. Now, tonight, 11 kids played, only two seniors. So you know what that means? Nine still come back next year. Honestly, it's unbelievable. Um, I'm not gonna say that I didn't have faith in us, but we did lose to both of these teams by 20 the first time we played them. And we really showed that we could come back and push through hard work and beat these teams when it counted. As you mentioned, you lost to Rochester twice this year. You've lost to Sony once. Obviously, both of those teams were favored against you in districts. Stony was the favorite to win districts this year in your building. What was Bob's message to you coming in on Monday, beating three really good Rochester teams? So Bob always really preached to us that we were the most talented team on the court. And I think that our problem in recent games was we would be really close with them up until halftime and then kind of, I don't know, give up after uh, the third quarter when things got tough. And I think that this time around, we kind of just chose to persevere instead and that really made a difference. Being this the first district championship for Lake Orient since 2010, what does it mean for you to be a part of it, especially in your senior year? It's been really amazing. I've been on varsity since my sophomore year and we've always had like pretty good years, but this is the first year that I've finally seen everything come together and all aspects kind of click. Um, so it's really, really cool to kind of get that last chance. What does it mean to be able to embrace that underdog mentality and be able to beat both of them? Uh, it just shows that nothing's impossible. We went into both games knowing that they thought they were going to blow us out, and we worked hard and showed them who was boss. And what specifically about Clarkston are you going to have to watch out for them on Tuesday? Stop Maddie Skrupski. Find a way to stop Maddie Skrupski. She's an amazing ball player. She's an amazing ball player, and they're a good team. She can score from anywhere, and she can do whatever she wants. So we've got to find a way to stop her, and we'll just play tough. That's all we can do. The Dragons will now go on to face their rival Clarkston in the first round of regionals as they look to keep the miracle alive. From Lake Orion, this is Joey Tysick reporting for ONTV Sports. Unfortunately, the Dragons would fall to Clarkson in regionals 61-47, to but it was an amazing season for the Lady Dragons, and they are still a young team, so expect them back next year. Now in the coming weeks, the spring sports season will begin as ONTV will look to cover lacrosse, boys soccer, softball, and track. For even more Lake Orion sports, check out our YouTube channel for our full game coverage. Visit YouTube.com and search for Orion Neighborhood Television. Also, make sure to catch all of our replays Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays at 7 p.m., along with Saturdays at 1 p.m. See you next time. And welcome back to Orient Today. I'm Joe Johnson, joined by Kim Urbanowski. Lots of great things happening at Lake Orient schools and sports. They always excel. Oh, yeah. um, you know, we got uh, spring and summer sports coming up, and, of course, my favorite time of the year. This is a little down the road, but... I love Lake Orion football, uh -huh. love being on the sidelines. You may have seen me running <laughs> up and down the sidelines with my portable camera. Love being in the action, uh, having 300 pound football players fall around my feet 
Uh, keeps reminds me I'm alive. Keeps yeah. my adrenaline going. Uh, it's a little bit of a workout <laughs> trying to dodge them at the same time with your camera equipment. I did get hit once. I was I was on the sideline, had the viewfinder up, and I thought the play was over. It had gone out of bounds, and I kind of let my guard down. And two defenders <laughs> had collided with each other, and they were thrown <laughs> into me and hit me and I spun around Ooh. and someone caught me before I uh, went to the ground. <laughs> and initially I was like, I, I think I'm okay, I'm all right, and continued doing the game. And when I woke up the next day, I couldn't move. My oh. back was wrenched, I was so oh. sore. Um, but I'm usually pretty good about uh, yeah. dodging that uh, action yeah. on the sidelines. No, it is pretty cool um, to watch you work on that. And then also to listen to your to your, you know, color commentary. You're, I do. I, I'm not a, fo you know, I don't know much about football, but I have watched your your videos, and you really <laughs> get into it. You're pretty good at that. Oh yeah, when I do the sports packages, the highlights, I try to emulate one of my heroes, Chris Berman. When Chris Berman does highlights on ESPN after the fact, he acts as if he's calling the game live, and he yeah. gets so animated and so excited and he comes up with the funny little nicknames for players yeah. and stuff so when i put together my sports packages after the fact i try to emulate that same excitement when i'm um, doing my uh, voiceover on it it's a lot of fun it comes and across those packages get a lot of views people sure. love their sports love their football here in this yeah, area they yeah they so, do yeah <laughs> so as we said you know the uh covid seems to be winding down a little bit warm weather is mm -hmm. right around the corner we we got fooled a little bit on St. Patrick's Day when we had a nice warm day, and then you step outside and it's 20 something degrees out. It's uh, snowed on Saturday. It snowed. <laughs> yeah. They said we're in the middle of second winter right now. Um, but spring is coming. We're out and about. We're doing things again. Uh, there's joy in the air. I know I'm excited. And there are lots of activities uh, happening in the community over the next several weeks. Uh, so let's take a look at uh, upcoming events in Lake Orion on this week's Quick Hits. The Orion Township is hosting a community blood drive this Thursday. The drive will take place at the Orion Center from 2 to 7 p.m. Each donation okay. can impact up to three lives. Appointments are preferred to assist with social distancing and masks are required. Call 866-642-5663 to schedule your appointment today. On Friday, the Orion Library will be hosting Senior Social Hour from 11 to noon. Join the library every first and third Friday of the month for a chance to get out and socialize. Each week will feature a different topic of conversation. This is a great chance to enjoy the company of other seniors. On Saturday, the Orient Library will have taken to make the skies of bunny packets available for pickup. This bunny is tired of being asked about Easter and just wants a break. Create a fun disguise for your bunny. All supplies will be available on a first-come, first-served basis starting at 9.30 in the library's lobby. On Saturday, the Orient Lions Club is partnering with the library to offer free vision screening to children over five months of age. The screening will take place in the James Ingram Room from 10 to noon. The test is quick and painless, and if caught early, 95% of vision issues can be corrected. Well, it looks like we won't be seeing the sun for a while. Tomorrow's forecast is calling for morning sleet with a high 55 and low 52. AM showers on Thursday with a high 55 and low 28. Mostly cloudy on Friday with a high of 39 and low 27. And mostly cloudy again on Saturday with a high of 46 and low 30. And cloudy skies on Sunday with high 45 and low of 28. Well, that's it for this week's Owen TV Quicket. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. So, lots of things happening in the Lake Orion community. Uh, like I said, spring is right around the corner, warm weather is coming up. Kim, is there anything you really look forward to when the warm weather approaches? Oh, getting outside for sure. Um, Camp Agawam is a fun place to go, you know, mm -hmm. where. Looking forward to getting out there and playing around again. Um, you know, uh, you mentioned uh, DTE is now known as uh, Pine Knob again. Uh, do you ever make it out there? Do you see concerts at Pine Knob? I do, actually. It's been a bit. Um, I I will say that you know one of the last shows that I did see there was Foo Fighters. So uh, ah, you know, a feeling a little sad note there. Yeah, yeah. feeling a little uh, sad about that today. But yeah, Pine Knob is probably one of my favorite. When I moved here uh, in 
well, when I was in high school. I mean, I'm from here, but I lived around a lot of places, moved here um, from North Carolina. I went to see, uh, my first concert was at Pine Knob, and it was amazing. I'd never seen anything like that. And, uh, you know, so I'm glad it's Pine Knob again. But um, <laughs> Yeah, me too. Graduation's coming up, so we'll be, we'll be head to Pine Knob for that. Yeah. You know, it's where people always ask, what was your first concert? And I, I really can't remember <gasps> what my first concert is. I, what was your first concert? It was Sean Cassidy. Oh my God, my <laughs> sister loves Sean Cassidy. You wanna hear something crazy? Yeah. Uh, just before COVID, before lockdown, uh, my sister and some family and friends flew to Vegas to see Sean Cassidy. Um, so this was just two years ago. And she still has her like satin Sean Cassidy yeah. jacket with like a picture on the back. Oh, well, yeah. somebody took it from her <gasps> Went backstage and had Sean Cassidy sign it, if you can believe it. It was a dream come true for my sister. Holy smokes. <laughs> I, I had the, I still have a picture of me because we were living in, when I saw him, we were living in Hawaii at the time. And I was in like second or third grade, something like that. I don't know. And my mom took me and it was just wild. It was just, you know, I had the t-shirt and all the whole thing and the poster and all of that. It goes deep, those, those childhood Mm -hmm. you know, uh, idols, goes deep. Yeah. <laughs> now, w one of the first concerts I remember seeing uh, at Pine Knob, uh, believe it or not, I was a huge Monkees fan. And oh, yeah. in 1986, uh, they did a uh, uh, anniversary, 20th anniversary tour. Mm -hmm. Mike didn't travel with them, but it was Peter Davy and Mickey. And that was a blast. And sure. it's hard to believe that their 20th anniversary tour was, what, almost... 40 years ago, 35 right. years ago, uh, pretty crazy. And since then, we've we've now lost three of the monkeys. Yeah. Mickey is the last one standing. Yeah. Now he is going to be coming to Michigan soon. He's uh, in August, a Dragon on the Lake weekend. Mm. Uh, he's going to be up in Marysville, uh, making an appearance with the original Monkey Mobile. No, uh, which <laughs> my friend owns. Uh, I know the guy who owns one of the original Monkey Mobiles. There's two made for the original TV show, and one of them went up for auction back in 2008. My friend flew out to Arizona, bid on it, and to his shock, he won it. Oh my so gosh. So when you see the Monkey Mobile at Woodward Dream Cruise or uh, at car shows here in the Metro Detroit area, it's the actual Monkey Mobile from the TV show, and it's going to be reunited with Mickey Dolan's in oh, August wow. That's in so Marysville. Cool. So I'm hoping to make that. You know what, I, I I did watch that. For a while they had it back on Nickelodeon, I think. Mm -hmm. They were showing the reruns on Nickelodeon and I made a point to watch that. And I was big, um, it, Peter, Peter, what's his name? Peter Tork. Tork. Peter Tork, yeah. Yeah, he, yeah. yeah I liked watching that show. That was cool. <laughs> um, so that's interesting. Yeah, so I've seen, uh, I've seen all the monkeys in person at mm. one time or another. I saw that reunion tour. I saw Davey's Teen Idol tour, <laughs> where he toured with Peter oh. Noon of Herman's Hermits, mm. and I think Bobby Sherman or something like that. <laughs> um, and but. then uh, a couple of years ago, and this is, this is kind of odd, we just lost fairly recently Michael Nesmith, mm -hmm. and I was cleaning out a closet at home this past weekend, and as I was pulling out boxes and stuff, I saw a piece of paper on the floor, and I picked it up, and it was my ticket to Mike Nesmith's concert in Ferndale, just a few years ago. Really? And he played at the uh, Magic Bag in Ferndale. Yeah. And he was the last member of the Monkees that I had yet to see, and it was great. Now, sadly, he didn't play any Monkey songs. He just kind of did all his original stuff. For oh. the longest time, he kind of distanced himself from the Monkees. But then when Davey passed away, I think he sort of embraced it all and started making personal appearances again. Do you think sometimes they maybe don't play things because they're not allowed to or it's it's contractually in the case of mike i just think he was trying to distance to himself distance from himself. that yeah. yeah he wanted to establish himself as a creator and uh he has a legacy he was partially responsible for creating mtv if you can believe it yeah How? yeah he he pitched an idea for it and as it got developed they asked if he wanted to be part of it and he sort of opted out and it continued on and became MTV. Really? So yeah, he had a role in the creation of MTV and a oh, wow. little, little tidbit on Mike Nesmith is uh, one of the reasons he didn't part participate in the tours and all that is his mother invented Whiteout. 
And I remember yeah, that. yeah. And so he inherited uh, the white out fortune and allowed yeah. him to pursue his creative uh, endeavors. So I always got yeah. that mixed up with that. You know that movie Romeo and Michelle. Yep. And they talk about the post-its. I always thought, oh, like, right. <laughs> I always mixed the two up. I was always like, Is, are they talking about the monkey's guy or, you know, because it was the post-its. But I remember now it's, it was yeah. the whiteout thing. That's interesting. So, yeah, with the warm weather coming up, I'm looking forward to car shows uh -huh. and dream cruise. And yes. we have uh, Comic-Con, Motor City Comic-Con coming up in May. And, uh, and then, of course, I'll be getting away in a couple of weeks, go to L.A., my uh, happy place. So mm. I'm sure I'll have some stories uh, when I get back from that. So. And Wildwood. I'm looking forward to Wildwood. All the yeah. stuff that, that we do at Wildwood. That's Yeah, L.O. Palooza and oh, yeah. uh, all kinds of stuff happening. And concerts in the gazebo in Children's Park mm -hmm. are a weekly thing. Those, those are always a lot of fun. And uh, we'll have some clips for you over the next uh, few episodes of uh, Orient Today uh, to kind of look back at maybe last season and the seasons before that to refresh your memory that uh, there's live entertainment all throughout Lake Orion, including uh, 20 Front Street yeah. and um, and over at the uh, the uh, amphitheater at Camp Agawam, oh, yeah. uh, they have an annual concert there, a big music festival there. So lots going on, lots to see and Tommy do here Stock, in Lake right? Orion. Is that what you're talking about, Tommy Stock? Yes, Tommy yeah. Stock. Yeah, yeah, that's always a lot of fun. Uh, and that, that raises funds to help maintain uh, Camp Agawam over there. Fire so. Bowl. Yeah, on the Fire yeah. Bowl. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Amazing. We have so much good stuff here. There is. In a way. Yeah. More people don't just just come on in. Yep. And I'm just so <laughs> glad that, like I said, everything's returning to normal, yeah. hopefully. Uh, lots of stuff to see and do here in Lake Orion. And, um, and uh, yeah, it's going to be a busy summer. I'm excited for it. All right. Well, I think that pretty much uh, wraps up this uh, debut episode of uh, Orient Today. Did you have fun today? I had a blast. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. We're looking forward to the next one. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon on Orient Today. I'm Joe Johnson, Kim Urbanowski. We'll see you next time.